Hello everybody and welcome back to the kingdom. Today should be my 4,000 subscriber special. 4,000! That's awesome! No, it may not be 4 million, it may not be 400,000, it may not be 40,000, it's 4,000. And I'm very happy with that and I'm very pleased. And it's really nice to think that... You know, could you even picture that? How many people used to go to your school? How many people do go to your school? How many people do you work with? How many people do you live near? 4,000, no matter how you put it, is a lot of people. And this hobby has been really enjoyable because of you 4,000. And hopefully there will be more times to come. So today, for my special, we're going to do a world tour. Just because I just don't have the time. I've had a really bad past couple of weeks for various reasons which I will not go into so I will tour as I haven't done one for a very long time I thought it would be a nice thing so today we're going to start off with spawn this is where spawn is around here and this is the arena now this world's gone through a lot of stages I used to play this as a server world on my own in the 1.3 snapshots and this was because things like pistons behave differently in SMP than single player. And I wanted to design things that would work on servers and on single player. I didn't want to restrict people to single player. And that's how I started. From then I've moved it back to single player eventually. Um, it's all the same. I just host it on a local PC. But at the moment it's just on single player. And this is the arena and that's explaining why this is a PvP arena because I still do put the save file or a backup at least on a server and do have people over now and then even just to look around the world and that's what I really enjoy and that's what I really wanted out of YouTube it's the interactivity between subscribers with other YouTubers and it's been really nice you know, the money is awful the money is negligible basically no, it costs me more to upload than I make back from the videos. But it's a hobby, and I'm not expecting to make any money ever from this. So here is the arena, and we'll go down and look in a second. We have the mines down here, though. And this is where I put the strip mines. For me, I guess, quite recently. It's been down here a couple of months, but as the world goes, it's quite recent. And I haven't really done much development down here at all. I set up a whole load of strip mining, which I did a whole load of mining down at Christmas and got three or four stacks or more of diamond blocks so I haven't really needed to come down here in a long time and because these 1.5 snapshots there's a whole load of things which are changing and as we're into the final stretches of the game development and Mojang did say 1.5 will be the end of the main core game development after that they're looking at the mod API and they're looking at handing it off to other people and basically they're just going to be slowing down development I'm not saying they're stopping, they'll just be slowing it down and as the hoppers and things are coming to fruition and they're trying to finalise them they will be probably the last major game changing updates that we're going to see in Minecraft so it's a sad day of that but no, they will continue some things and just waiting for that to finish really, that's why I haven't been doing many videos on the vanilla because you know, things that I design now will be irrelevant the next week and that's very frustrating when it takes me a very long time to record these oh, it's daytime so down here is my ice farm this does a horrifically large amount of ice and we'll just show you why I didn't ever fully automate this and this is the side part to let the water in this is the pistons when they move over, that whole side moves first and they come to this side. Each line goes at the same exact time. And we'll go have a look at why I don't automate it this. Yep, there you are. They all move, all the lines move at the same time. But there is so much lag from those pistons, it's hilarious. There you are. Chunk loading lag. Also to do with recording on fraps, but there you go. So here we are to the arena. I love this project. I really love the colour scheme. I've repeated this a couple of times through the world. We'll go look up the top first. 
and this is where some of my beacons have been living. At the moment, I think I've just got jump and speed in here. I haven't actually been here for quite a while. I do love this area though. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And lots of things here were designed for you know, bud switches, player detection, and all sorts of sensors, and also lots of things with the dispensers. But they kept changing them, so a lot of things that I'd had planned for this area are now void. They don't work anymore. And I may get around to finishing this one day. But now I've got my witch hut area, my sandstone area, tree burnt down, no, just things that I've enjoyed around the world. So that's the spawn and my arena. It does look quite nice. I'm proud of it. And that's why I want to do things in this world. It's not for making everything look pretty as it can. I don't spend hours on aesthetics. No, I don't spend videos and videos playing with tiny little parts of things. I like doing whole projects. And that's what sets me apart from a lot of the YouTubers. No, I'm not saying I'm the only person that does it, but I'd rather do videos like this than just doing fillers all the time. And to be honest, I count this video as a filler. I just don't have the time. So this is my portal to the base, but over here is the wither farm. There you are. Wither skeleton farm. So I'll pause until I get over there. And here we are. So this is what I've been working on the last couple of months, now and then. This side has mostly been TNT'd out. Lava is still coming down. A lot of fire potions, a lot of work goes into this. You can just about see on the peripheral vision the with the farm itself. And I will go up high to show you it in a nicer view. And there we are. So, I might go over there in a minute, but that's probably the best view you're going to get from it on the right hand side. That took a lot of time. And it's being made more efficient um, when I'm TNT in this area, but to be honest, I've got enough wither skulls so that I do not need to do any more clearing out. I've already got plenty. So I might be able to end up over there actually and glitch through the iron bars. <sighs> Let's see about that. And here we are at the cactus farm. No, 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 I joke. This is the wither farm. It does double up as a cactus farm if I ever wanted it to, though. It's really here just to brighten up the nether, because the nether is a dreary place. And also for recording, the lovely green does look very nice. So let's go have a little look at the platforms. When I don't miss. There we are. So this is one of the projects that is finished enough. No, in single player there is no reason to need to do more. And these are just consisting of pads of spawnable areas. So this is basically two intersections worth. There's not many there. Where was I? There we are. So these are designed to catch wither skeletons. As you can see there's some up here now. And it's quite nice, it's pretty fast for single player. There's no need to make it automatic. I don't need that many skulls, as you've seen in my other videos. I've got over a stack and a half of skulls from this world. And I've killed, I think, something like 15, 20 with the skill, well, with the bosses. And I can kill about 20 more at the moment. So, it's not really needed but it does look pretty nice. So, let's go back to the portal. So here's the portal back. Base, AFK stream. Now this has been there quite a while now. This brings in my drops from my mob farms, my sugarcane farm, my pumpkin farm, and anything else I want to throw into it. And down here is the storage which is still under development. It has been for a little while now, a good month maybe. And it kind of got stopped because of the new change with the trap chests and the hoppers and I will be building in here a completely automatic storage system in the nether at the moment I've just got the things coming out into these chests here this is a temporary thing which still makes it completely AFK now when I come through into nether these chunks load all the items that have come through go through there not too safe at the moment 
and they have hoppers underneath that and they get filtered out into the chests. Now I will make this all covered over eventually, I think. I do like to keep things open so I have a chance to expand if I want to. But now we move on to the gold farm. Now this is one of my more recent projects so I see you up this ladder. So here we are at the top of the bedrock and now we're up. Now a lot of people, or some people at least, don't like the whole thing of doing things on top of the nether. Now this mechanic has been in the game for an incredibly long time and I wouldn't do it if I was on a server to be honest but on single player for a gold farm, no gold is basically useless and I only want it as a building block as you can see over there with the beacons I don't want it for rails, I don't want it for anything else I just don't need it so that's how I'm justifying doing it on top and it's a nice project to do now if they changed it so that you couldn't end a pearl through blocks anymore then I wouldn't mind at all so I'm just going to go to the top up there and I'll explain about the farm and here we are at the top of the nether the top of the top of the nether and this is up at max building height and I could stand a couple more blocks higher and make it more efficient but not too concerned and basically what happens here is you only load up one to eight blocks around you so this to the top of the nether is as far as it would actually load so none of the actual nether inside gets loaded therefore this is technically in perfect spawning conditions so that's why it's so effective and it does produce 4000 gold nuggets an hour and last time I went and made a whole stack of super notch apples which were a bit disappointing but no, I can say I've done it how many other people can say they've done that legitly I don't know that's the whole point in these things they're fun and it does look pretty nice and I like it so drops come down here you can see there's some <laughs> here already from when I was last just sitting around here but yeah that's it basically for the farm and let's go on now to the end so from here we're just going over here I like to keep things quite close that's why I love the portal networks and all this under here is ice so all of this is super fast moving land so yeah I don't like to stick around so let's go through here this is the end portal now I would like to spend some time on this actually and make it really look nice as you can see it's still as I found it basically I used to have a train track that used to come all the way in that goes all the way back to the base but I don't use train anymore because they're just too slow so into the portal we go and first of all we're going to have a little look at the en Enderman farm now this is my own design and this is what I like to do on this let's play I don't like copying other people's designs. I think the only thing I've got on this world which is someone else's design is JL's iron farm. But other than that, everything is original and uh, it's more fun for me that way. And a lot of time I see things and I think I could do it differently or I don't see why they've done it that way and I go think I can make a better one. So I do. And hopefully that helps some of you people. So here we are. We have a little look up here first. I do have a beacon here as well. I have a lot throughout the world. So this is a regeneration beacon. This is completely spawn proof. And there's the Enderman farm. It goes up to 128. And Enderman are angry already. So let's go over a look in there. No, like I said, it's my own design and I'm very proud of it because it is probably the only safe Enderman farm. I still gotta do some fixing around here sometime from when we had the snapshot glitches with all the visual stuff and the blocks disappearing and everything else which is very bizarre so there's still legacy from that but anyway, this is a one wide enderman farm which is completely safe you cannot be hit by enderman and the link is normally always in my description and it's got quite a cool feature to it Oop. auto kill <laughs> so you go from farming to collection not that I really ever need to collect loads of enderpearls because I have them always. They do make a horrific sound though. So we're going to go back to the rest of the end now. And here we are. So this is another spawn proof area and I probably should take the minecart but it's a bit loud. 
That's what I hate about recording uh, minecarts. They really never fix that. I think they reduced it a little bit, but not enough. So let's go down here. And this is a very long term project which will be turning into its own villager village. Because in the end, zombies do not spawn. So these are my little villagers. And this whole place will be turned eventually, when I get time, into a desert village. So I'm going to have a desert temple in the middle where that pillar is. Going out to little villager houses. And this is actually where my donations are held. So I've got two here, and I've got another one to build currently. So, no, I'm <laughs> donations, they really do help. They, it's not really a financial thing, it's more of a justification for doing this. No, I just like to feel that people enjoy it, and that's what I'm here for. Like I said, I'm not here to make loads of money, but being able to justify doing it to myself sometimes is a nice thing. Because when I'm spending 30, 40 hours doing a video, especially on the Let's Play, I could be earning a lot of money doing other things. And it just makes it seem a little bit better, because my girlfriend doesn't like me doing this, because it takes time away from her. And it does degrade from other things as well. But these lights are going to be hiding all the bedrock pieces, and I've been taking down the pillars as I go. But yeah, that's about it for the end. I've got my iron station here. I do have a lot of iron on this on this world, I have to admit. So this should go. And through the final portal for this tour, there are some other ones that go to some other places, like the village, but I'm not going to show that today. I'm going to miss out some of the things on the world, because I don't have that much time, do I? <laughs> I'm going to use up all the time just showing these things off. So this is the Sky Fortress, because it's in the sky. So I wait for it to load. And there we are. So, this is the Sky Fortress. This will be turned in the not too distant future into a gigantic mob spawner with automatic sorting system and storage, which should be very nice. I have a design in mind, but I will not sit there and spend hundreds of hours building it until we finalize the hoppers and all that. So, I've got to wait for 1.5 to finish which should only be another couple of weeks so this bottom bit will be turned into a giant pixel art I've been saying that for a very long time it's one of those things that I just haven't got around to finishing and I do have most of the wall I think already it's a very long time getting it, it's over 270 stacks of wall so yeah, not an easy thing to do all at once so there will be a giant pixel art eventually and this will be covered over I've been coming up here now and then between episodes when I have some free time just doing bit the glass and just carrying it home but let's go on to the main area and I'm glad it's getting to night now because it does look very nice at night so there's many ways into my base one of them is hidden staircase which I shouldn't have gone out that quickly and luckily this redstone still works from these updates so down here is a tunnel which would go underneath the sky fortress eventually and here is a player sensor and if I'm really lucky it will flicker now and there you go <laughs> had to wait for that that's a spider spawner player sensor just one of those fun little things I like to do because you don't see many of them on legitimate worlds down here is another way into the base we won't go there now let's go have a look at the surface and quite a lot of memories around here and I'll tell you why some things are like they are There you are. So this gets closed again by the tripwire over here, like so. So what have we got here at the main area? We've got farms. I love my farms, I really do. And all my farms are always on industrial scales. I've been told so many times that my f farms could feed servers, and they probably could. So these are my iron farms. The top one does not load because it's not within range. But these are JL's 2579's iron farms and no credit to him, they work very well some people have wanted me to cover them up sometimes but I think they look really nice as they are I may cover them eventually with gold blocks or something but nah, I don't know and really today I'm also looking for ideas and inspiration so do comment if little things, even little minor things you want me to change any suggestions anything he's updating. Now I'd love to sit around and be able to do them because really I haven't been able to do episodes but I haven't had the inspiration 
and things I wanted to do have been done already and too much spamming out YouTube with them but here is the slime farm it, at the moment it's off, it's got an automatic turn off system up here now this brings back memories and this is why this is still here this is my original area when I came to here this is about 600 blocks away from spawn I spawned over there and I came over here and I set up base here because I like the jungle nice little biome and it had some spawners here I found and here is my original chest how many people have their original chest on their world wooden pickaxes wooden axes why does it say axe? should not axe have an E on the end? hmm so this is where I originally had my little area as I was building things so my original bed nice little bit of memories there and ever since then it's just grown outwards so a lot of this whole area is spawn proof all of this area inside this wall is spawn proof apart from these annoying cats they do trample my plants sometimes but yes it's nice and safe I have a very efficient mob spawner because of all that lit up area up here is my artificial jungle temple block for block reproduce from one I found on the world that's why I've actually got the proper blocks and I built it up block by block and I did a tutorial on it as I destroyed it in another area and over here this has developed a lot in time I like to work on iterations and there's a zombie over there don't know why so yes I work on iterations so that I'll do a project come back after a couple of weeks and have a look at it again after I've built it in creative to begin with so I keep going through stages of building it again and again and again always find if you build something in creative and then go build it in survival you think up other ways of doing it you do things that would save time and actually more efficient so that's why I love developing things here it's like my little playground so this area here is just looking pretty <laughs> re-sculpting the landscape here is my wheat farm it does a thousand and forty wheat as you can see the cats like to trample the bottom and it was designed as a wheat farm but you can do carrots or potatoes and such there as well down here we have the sugarcane farm this is I love this I just love the colors and it's it's too good I'm no joking it produces I don't remember now 16 stacks of uh, sugarcane an hour it just floods my nether and here is my pumpkin farm now this is something I couldn't ever automate because I could put this on a timer and automate it, yeah I'm not worried about that it's just that this does 750 pumpkins just just absorb that for a second 750 pumpkins yeah that's why I said my farms could feed a server and obviously you can't eat pumpkin but I could change these all for melons and think of the entity count <laughs> um, just on this you get um, severe lag but yeah that goes through to the AFK stream as well and it's nice that I've dotted them all around the area and they all go to the same point and over here is one of my more recent farms and I really like this, this is my wood farm tree farm and it's just fantastic and it's one of those things that I went and built because I haven't seen anyone else do it it's a very very practical structure you can start from the top or the bottom and work your way up or down There's minimum time between trees there's maximum spawning efficiency on the trees and they all come down to get collected in these hoppers so they're very very nice and I only built them because I needed some wood <laughs> when I need something I go a bit over the top so this whole area is under development, it always is I'm just expanding it out as I go and just building more things if I can think of more things to build over here then I will but at the moment it's pretty spawn safe and that's all I really need so off to the main area of the base and I'll just say that there is some farms over there you know, pig, sheep, cow and all that but they're pretty boring so we're not going to go there that's one way into it and um, there's another way over here actually hidden under here somewhere and there is a leave switch here this one, nope, been a long time since I used this it's actually that one there there you are. another staircase like the one over there goes into the base and you can go down there 
Put it down here. That all closes. So we'll go down there now, into the base. And I do like my full damage drops. Some people don't. Gives me a little sense of uh, realism. And this is the way in the other way. You come down the vines and you come down here. Now, things have changed a bit here in this world. My storage system, I love it. I don't see any reason to have any other way of doing it. Apart from you can now do them sideways on, you can now do the trap chests. So you can have a lot more, but for this storage I've just done extra ones down here. And then they keep going, and in some cases they keep going even more. So things like cobble. So that's a nice little thing to have. I never really ever filled it up, but I could really if I really wanted to. And here is the other way in you saw earlier. If you went through there, that's the other way in. Oop, nearly burnt myself. So, slime farm, potion room, and I'll just pop these off for a second. It's the little things that make things nice. No, the little tiny conveniences, little tiny cute things you can put in. So there's not really much else here. There's a mushroom room over here, like so. And the rest is potions. I've got quite a lot brewed here. And I do go through fire potions like anything. Let's work around this way, I think. Down here is my spider spawner and zombie spawner. The spider spawner is actually set to automatic. We'll go have a look at that, actually. And since the hoppers came in when I was building my gold farm, I needed string. So all I did was set up a fall, and they die, mostly. And you get some string in there. So that's a little nice things to add. It was a XP farm when we had 1.3. Back on those days you had to have 50 levels to enchant something good. And obviously zombie spawner here. And over here is my portal room. And when I built this door, I was very proud of it because it is a 33 wide fully opening door with tripwires. As soon as the tripwires came out in the snapshots, I built this. It's all done by repeaters with two sets of timed repeaters. And I did it when I hardly knew anything about redstone. I was very impressed. And to this day, I haven't really even gone back there and looked at it to see how I actually did it in the end. I did it by process of uh, elimination, basically, of what would work and what wouldn't. So wait for this to load, and there you are. So this is the portal room. I love this place. Really love this place. This goes down to bedrock. And if I can hop onto here without dying. <laughs> there we are. So this is what I like doing. And that is the dragon egg down there. I do have quite a lot of dragon eggs. I did duplicate a load of them because I work on the thing that if they don't do anything, you, know, you might as well get them while you can. So I got a load of them, and I got another load of stuff from the enchanting bugs and other things that I just got down there as trophies in a little secret room down there. And that's about it for the portal room. We've covered most of the base now, actually. Skelly spawner down there. This is the automatic furnace that I built last episode. It works very well, and it works with two furnaces to the one I put out on the video. And I like it. It's very nice to have. And I think that's about it actually. That goes to the end portal. A little miniature wheat farm in here. Yeah, that's about it. So, I hope you've enjoyed the little tour of my world. I'd love some suggestions of what to do going forward. Especially with new updates. You know, what kind of farms do you think I should change? Or improve on? What things I should build? It's really just a feedback session. On everything. Ask away. Criticisms are allowed. Now, as long as they're constructive, I love changing things as people request things. Now, a lot of people know if they make a suggestion, I'll do it. I just like to interact. But yeah, it's a weird day for me. 4,000 subscribers. But we are going to finish with looking at one last thing before I go today. And that's my quadruple witch hut. Pretty snazzy, isn't it? So, that's about it for my world tour. I missed out a few things, but hopefully I've got the main stuff in a nice sized episode. So, I'm just going to finish with saying thank you very much guys, 4,000 subscribers. Now, I've really enjoyed doing this, I wouldn't do it without you. So, thank you very much for joining me guys, and I hope to see you next time.